Mr. Speaker, on April 6th of this year, the President of the United States traveled halfway around the globe and in the nation of Turkey essentially proclaimed that the United States was not a Judeo-Christian nation. We do not consider ourselves a Christian nation or a Jewish nation or a Muslim nation. Uh, we consider ourselves uh, a nation of citizens. The first question was whether or not we ever considered ourselves a Judeo-Christian nation. And the second one is if we did, what was that moment in time where we ceased to be so? So where did this concept of a free government of judges come from in both the Book of Mormon and in our day? The answer to this is a fascinating story. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, who are often accused of being unrighteous, immoral men, interestingly enough, not only did both of these founders connect their part and, and connect the founding of America to ancient Israel, their proposal for the United States seal, both of them, were different variations of the ancient Israelites being led by God. That's what they wanted to be the national symbol of the United States of America. Mr. Jefferson proposed the children of Israel in the wilderness, led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The Lord instituted a system of judges to rule Israel. The people were organized into units, the primary unit being the family. Arising issues were resolved as near their origin as possible. In order to avoid centralization of power, federalism provides a power-protecting vertical layout. The purpose of government, the very purpose of the Constitution, is to limit power. Power that is remote to the individual, power at the national level. Well, of course, the Nephites in, in their constitutional republic had divided and subdivided power also. And it's interesting that that was created for the very same purposes, to make sure that no one could create a tyranny. No one was their monarch. No one stood at the head, except by the voice of the people under election. Benjamin Franklin talked about it. John Adams talked about it. They said, look what we're doing. We're following the pattern of ancient Israel. They wanted to move this nation forward by looking back and returning to a divine law which had been rejected by ancient Israel. The leaders in America reached back into the ancient sacred vault of history. Love that term. And they brought all that was good forward. One Georgetown law professor says he knows the answer. Quote, give up on the Constitution at the heart of our democracy. A document that this professor says is not only dated, but perhaps even downright evil. You know, I don't worry about the Constitution on this, to be honest. I, I care more about the people that are dying every day that don't have health care. You care more? Where, where specifically does the, uh, the Constitution grant Congress the authority to enact an individual health insurance mandate? Uh, are you serious? Are you serious? I would not look to the U.S. Constitution if I were drafting a Constitution in the year 2012. Not only were the laws of Mosiah given divine sanction, in like manner, the United States constitutional government has been approved in the Word of God. Mormon deliberately placed in the scripture record the Lord's divine approval of Mosiah's laws, which were based upon the brass plates. J. Reuben Clark, I think, said it so well when he said, the Constitution, my Constitution, is scripture. He said, I carry that with my scriptures. I look upon it as scripture. As I have said to you before, so I say again, the Constitution of the United States is a great and treasured part of my religion, and the revelations of the Lord and the words of our inspired leaders compel it to be so. Is there anything, we heard there was something on the top that was written on the top of it. What is that? What is that? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I just started working a couple okay. weeks ago. Oh, the convert, yeah, I always forget that. Something about uh, referring to God. We get a consistency that uh -huh. people, no matter how many years they worked in Washington, uh -huh. and they know exactly how many years it took to build, exactly how much it costs to build, right. exactly how much it weighs, right. uh -huh. how many eighths of an inch it sways one direction or the other, right. but they don't know something that's been something permanently like inscripted <laughs> since it was built <laughs> over 100 years ago. And the point being that we've lost a lot of the, the real key values, the things that we have taught for years.
Later on in the Book of Mormon, as we see the Nephites move away from their spiritual moorings, they also move away from their political moorings. When Mrs. Margaret Thatcher was on this campus and I was talking with her, she said, I cannot understand it. You have the motto, in God we trust on your coinage. And yet you cannot mention the name of deity in the classrooms of your schools. She wondered, and I wonder about our consistency. In embracing these things, we've abandoned the principles that were given to us by our founding fathers, but also the principles that were given to the Nephites and to ancient Israel by God himself. There are those in this nation today who would delete all of this reference to deity. They would take it out of the Pledge of Allegiance. They would take it from our coinage. They would remove it from our, any mention in our national life. The Nephites did the same thing. Uh, the city of Ammonihah, the city of Jacob Yuga. They were all studying to remove the principles that God had given in government. See, Pehoran ignored the petition because it would have implemented a change. The freemen understood that if their constitution was not protected, they would lose their liberty and their rights of worship. Their very purpose for leaving Jerusalem and being led to a promised land, their freedom of religion would be lost. Our constitution has been shredded. It's, it's a terrible situation. Whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. No longer a Christian nation. We are forsaking the Almighty, and I fear He is forsaking us. We are closing the door against the God whose sons and daughters we are.